key to long sets. Well, we just pulled up to the river farm and uh, we're gonna head back in the pinch. Feels nice and cool today. It's, I think with the wind about 29 degrees, straight north wind. We're gonna get in there and hopefully DK shows up. Welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. It is October 29th, Sunday, and we are enjoying this beautiful cold front here in the Midwest. I've been out hunting the last four or five days. Uh, this cold front timed up nicely with my vacation days, and it really couldn't be happening at a better time. The end of October, my very favorite time to be hunting. The pre-rut, it's, uh, we've had some good activity. We've had a mix of a couple slow hunts in there, but for the most part, we've been having some really nice hunts. And uh, as you could see this morning, we had another great encounter with that buck I call Moss. And uh, just a beautiful, big four-year-old buck, chasing, grunting. That's the second time in the last few days that we've had a 10-yard encounter with him. Lots of young bucks running around, having a good time. Still haven't had any encounters with DK, but you know, it feels like it's gonna happen any day now. On this week's show, we're gonna join Andy Melton and his son on his son's hunt. And uh, this really hits home for me. You know, I do a lot of hunting with Bella and it's, it's one of my favorite things to do uh, in hunting right now is to take my kids out hunting and watch as they grow and mature as a hunter. And Andy's having that same experience with his boy. And uh, after a couple of nice hunts, ended up having a successful hunt after a great buck. After Blake's hunt, we're going to jump over to Owen. Owen is back in the saddle, and he's been having some great encounters, uh, lots of activity. He's a few hours west of us, and so that front hit him a day earlier, and he's had a, just a couple of great evenings uh, with lots of great activity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is my favorite time of year to hunt because of that pre-rut setting, 
these mature bucks looking for that first available doe and in general how successful you can be with calling and a couple of concepts I always use and we talk about we've talked about on the podcast recently uh, things that if you were focusing on just a few things you know we talk about blind calling we talk about calling to a deer but when you're setting up keep in mind trying to set up in a situation where it makes it difficult for the buck to get downwind of you and also ideally uh, where you have some ground cover, something between you and the deer where they can't see what's making that noise and they have to come in to investigate it. The other concept that I like to use is the idea of escalation of calling. So start off soft, start off with grunts, move to a snort wheeze, and then move to rattling. You know, I always do the least amount that gets that deer's attention. You're watching body language, you're looking for an ear twitch, you're looking for that deer to see if that deer heard you and you don't want to just keep blowing at them, you know, so we always do the least amount. And if I had one call to use where I was calling to a deer that was, you know, within 100 yards of me that I lay eyes on, it'd be a snort wheeze. I, th I throw a grunt or two out to get their attention, and then a little snort wheeze kind of back away from them. That has worked over and over for me. Hopefully that'll help you guys bring a big buck into your setup this year. We're gonna jump into the show. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. As you can see behind me, the fall colors are in full swing. The crops are drying up, getting harvested out of the field, and November is literally days away. But for this week's show, we're gonna take it back a couple weeks to my son Blake, who was able to kill his personal best buck on the juvenile hunt in Southern Illinois. All right guys, oh, it's day two of the Illinois juvenile season. Got Blake with me over here this afternoon. His brother Brady killed one yesterday evening. We just made it in from Tennessee in time to help him do the recovery. Got a really nice eight point. We're hoping that Blake uh, can uh, follow suit tonight and uh, hopefully lay one down himself. So we're heading up here to the bean field where David killed his doe at there a week or so ago. A lot of bucks came out in the field that night. So we're hoping that uh, we have the same results that we did that night. I'm gonna go ahead, get my orange on, and uh, get headed to the blind. We'll catch you all when we get in the blind. All right, we are locked and ready to roll. Beans have dried off a bunch, they're all turning brown. That's a good thing. They don't like them when they're yellow, but they do like them when they go ahead and get brown again. So, let the fun begin. Illinois juvenile hunt, day number two. Hey guys, we just got back to the cabin here and uh, wanted to quickly run through Blake's hunt this afternoon. I mean, that was, that was a really good deer. I mean, he had some long tines and as soon as he came out, Blake was like, big buck, big buck, weren't you? But you know, I have to say I am proud of him for not going ahead and just, just firing a shot at that deer and just trying to hit him and hoping that he made a good shot. You know, that's a big deer, especially for a 14 year old boy. That was, that was gonna be the biggest deer of his life so far. Didn't kill him today, possibly tomorrow. And if not, at least you'll get to come back and hunt uh, gun season during the rut. We are back in the blind. Going after too tall this evening again, hopefully. Came out here last night, plenty of shooting light, about 45 minutes before the shooting light was up actually. And uh, he stayed out about 240 yards. And uh, Blake just couldn't quite get comfortable enough to shoot at him yesterday. 
he thinks now, looking back, that he probably could have made the shot after we got back. And he's aimed the gun quite a bit and practiced squeezing the trigger and doing a few things to help him. So he's going to make it happen this evening. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. If he walks out. Oh my God, you got him, you got him, Blake. You got him, you got him, buddy. You got him. Oh my God, you did it. You smoked him, buddy, smoked him. Did you see a bullet? All right, all right, guys. As you saw right there, he's down. Blake made an awesome shot. All that practicing, holding that gun and aiming, it paid off, buddy, right there, right there you go. I bet that's your biggest buck to date right there. Monster. Same deer we saw here yesterday evening. We came back up here. We were actually supposed to leave today. We fly out in the morning at 7.30. And uh, we decided to stay one more evening, give Blake one more chance, and it paid off in a big way. That's flipping awesome, man. What a shot. Golly, son. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Oh, he has a kicker on the back right here. Get some light in here. Look right here. Oh, heck yeah. Tell you what, persistence paid off for Blake this weekend. We actually fly out at 7.30 tomorrow morning, and Blake was like really wanting to stay and get one more chance at this buck, and I'm really glad that we did now because it all paid off. The footage will tell the story. It was mm -hmm. absolutely awesome. What do you think? Great. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm surprised I had enough like, patience. Patience, yeah. To make the shot. Yeah. Hey, you always if you squeeze that trigger, you can you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that hunt as much as I did filming it and bringing it to you. You know, uh, as a dad watching your son progress from hunting as a kid up to a young man and who's able to make his own decisions on when he's comfortable to shoot when he feels that it is an ethical shot, really gives me a lot of confidence whenever I'm not sitting there beside him to know that he is gonna make those decisions when he's out there hunting on his own. As far as the rest of our season goes, David and I will be heading to Illinois next Friday for our annual rutcation. I know that this week right here coming up when you guys are watching this episode, it's gonna be right in the middle of one of the best cold fronts, if not the best cold front of the year. So I wanna wish you all good luck if you're out there hunting. And uh, we appreciate you watching Midwest Whitetail. Man, I've said it before, none of that Loch Ness hunt conditions are as good as you can get. We got three eights in this area that I would shoot any of them. <laughs> best hunt I've ever been on in 40 years of bow hunting. This thing is unbelievable. I can't believe that. Well, you know, when you get these cold fronts that 
coincide with the traditional good hunting days, late October, early November, coupled with the high pressure, rising moon in the evening, uh, still moon still up in the morning. Those are all triggers that I always key in on and should make for some great hunting. And this cold front has lived up to the billing. They are dropping like flies right now the last two days. I had a great hunt last night. I know uh, Mike Reed connected on that DK buck, so that's super exciting. I know there's a little surprise at the end of that one you guys are gonna love. And then I heard Zach also connected there on Area 52, he shot one of his targets. So very exciting time, great time to be out. I hope you guys are having some luck. But check back next Monday. I believe my hunt will be next Monday will kick off. I'm not sure the order on the others, but we've got a bunch in the pipeline coming your way. So as always, appreciate you guys joining us and uh, we'll see you back here next Monday. Thank you.